Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Is it tomorrow already? Are you watching this out there in New Zealand? Is that what you're, you're one of those Kiwis? That's what they're called, right? And I, I know, wait, yeah, Aussies are Australia and the Kiwis are New Zealand, right? Because I know if you're an ignorant American like me, you just look at a map and you want to say, oh, yeah, it's the same. Kiwis, Aussies, down under. Yeah, that's all this. That's Crocodile Dundee, right? No, I can assure you that's not. Don't you go down there saying anything like that. That's like looking at a map saying, oh, yeah, Edmonton, Calgary. Yeah, that's all just the same up there. I can assure you it's not the same. I, I was given a crash course in the difference between Calgary and Edmonton folk. All right. It's the greasers and the socias. You're talk it's a class war out there. So, you know, what the hell? How did I get into what? What am I talking about? We're definitely not talking about Tuesday night games. And there are a lot of them because you guys know how it goes. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Those are the NHL happy days. That's when we have big slates to choose from. And just because there are a lot of games on this slate doesn't necessarily mean, oh, I like this team, this team, this team. Because there are a few that I like and then others like the Calgary Flames playing the Nashville Predators. And I know are the Greasers, the Socias, Cal I know a couple of you. Uh, wait, which ones are the... I think the Calgary's the upper crust, right? I know you, I know you Socias up there in Calgary are thinking, no, nah, look, it was a bad start to the, we're getting our act together. I know last year we underwhelmed all year. I know that we traded for 30 year old Huberdeau who earned his whole contract and should be thanking Barkov every single day. I know we signed Kadri whose stats were inflated and he's over 30 and we paid him for Colorado production that wasn't sustainable, but I can assure you, Andy, tonight we're taking out the Predators and then we're taking the Western Conference by storm and it all starts here on this video. Look, I don't have time for you right now. You never had your car. I'm not taking that game. I'm going to focus on the things I do know opposed to the ones I don't. And that's going to be the Carolina Hurricanes, who last week we, we foreshadowed them. Going home for a couple of games, winning those. They went on the road. They beat Philadelphia. They lost to their nemesis in a tough one, the Rangers, their, their, their kryptonite. And then they trailed the Islanders by three goals and then beat them in overtime, sustaining this pretty good stretch that they're on. Now they're going home to play Buffalo. And I know you're thinking, but Andy, I saw Freddie Anderson. He's out indefinitely. That's their goal. He's missed most of the last two years. Carolina are one of the teams that I like to call goalie proof. It's system over player in terms of goalie. That's why they don't allocate a lot of cap space to their goaltending. They play a type of defense that allows them to start Kochetkov or Ranta or Anderson or that guy who start who had to come in relief in that game, Toronto. Yeah, remember, go look it up. The guy they had to pull from the audience, the emergency third goalie who plays in a local league. He came in for the Hurricanes because both goalies were injured and they won. So I'm not so concerned about Freddie Anderson not playing in this game. They're playing Buffalo. They're one of the Jackal teams. They'll screw you on Monday and then take you to the prom on Tuesday. But here's what I do know. You get a team that doesn't play with structure against a team who does. I always take the team that plays with structure because the undisciplined, unstructured team is always going to provide way too many scoring opportunities for that team who is better on the defensive end. But the type of game Buffalo would have to play, they'd really have to be efficient with their scoring chances, in my opinion. You know, th there could always be things like power play, penalty kill, but I like what Carolina's doing right now. And there's a reason. Like, if you look at the records, you say, oh, they won't be bad. No, they're big favorites because I think the odds makers know. This is a good spot for Carolina. They they turned the page on that ludicrous opening stretch. I think they completely turned the page on that. They've won, what, four out of the, their last five, and I'm liking them at home going up against Buffalo. So give me the Carolina Hurricanes in that one. And, and I imagine because of the way Buffalo plays. When Buffalo loses, how many times is it two to one? When Buffalo loses, it's usually like 5-2. So they'll let in even more. On their own home ice a couple days ago, how many How many did Philadelphia score? Five? So 
This is a good instance where you can take the puck line for Carolina. You'll get Carolina at plus money. And then if you're taking the puck line, throw in Aho, throw in Natchez, throw in one of those guys to register a point, and you'll get Carolina at a nice price. So now let's go to another team, a team who got destroyed over the weekend. And I just want to remind you how crazy the NHL is. The Vegas Golden Knights, they beat the Colorado Avalanche. They shut them out seven to nothing. And I saw somebody tweet idiotically, who could stop, the, who could possibly stop this team, this Vegas team from going back to back? Like we didn't just see what happened to the Bruins last year. And if you need any more evidence of that, 24 hours later, they go into Anaheim. They play a team who was vying for the top overall pick last year and blow a two-goal lead in the third period and lose 4-2. to two. The night after convincingly beating Colorado, another, another reason why if a team's playing back-to-back -back and they're on the road, I don't care how bad that team is that they're playing on the second game, I like to kind of take that team. Vegas kind of gassed out in that sixth period of six in back-to-back -back nights. Anyway, the team that they smacked, Colorado, that was a big humble pie. I think after a beating like that, when you come home, I'm expecting a good effort. We took Colorado against St. Louis last week at home. Now, I don't want to say it's a similar spot because the team they're playing is a lot different than St. Louis. But without an MVP candidate for the, for the most part, and it looks like Jack Hughes won't be playing. I want to take the Colorado Avalanche to beat the New Jersey Devils. I think New Jersey, I'm, I'm not going to say they're vulnerable, but you remove Jack Hughes from the lineup. And I, don't, I don't think he sure played in the last game either, right? So if they're down, if they're down there, both of their number one overall picks, I'm seeing a team that is absolutely beatable, a team who you can score against. I mean, this is a team that actually concedes quite a few goals in Colorado on their home ice after a bad loss. I'm going to take them to win this game. And I always look to Nathan McKinnon when they need good games after a bad loss, because let's face it, they are still like last year, an extremely top heavy team they heavily rely on that top line and McCarr and Taves in the back end to to add in a little bit as well to do everything their top line has to do everything so if I'm right about Colorado winning I'm thinking McKinnon is going over one and a half on points so I like Colorado in this game I like Colorado and McCarr you can put those two together in a same game parlay on Caesars and if you want to do it on Caesars your first bet if you make it a $5 bet, you deposit 10, make a $5 bet, you'll get $150 in bonus bets to put on that same game parlay, Colorado and Macar. You just got to be a new user on Caesars over 21 and obviously located in a state or province where sports betting is permitted. And always remember, if you or anybody you know has a problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. If you want to access that nice and easy, click the link in the description down below and it will take you there. So I'll go with Colorado and Macar point. But I also think McKinnon and Rantanen are both good player point props. The beautiful thing about those two, power play together, top line together, they're usually putting up two points together. So if you want to, you know, a little bit more of a wild one, give me Colorado minus one and a half with McKinnon and Rantanen both going over their one and a half point total. How do you like that? That will give you some big plus money. So I was telling you about those Anaheim Ducks. Do you believe that they're on like a five game win streak? And some of these wins are against some pretty interesting teams. I think Boston was in there. Vegas was in there. These are teams. Boston had no losses at the time. Vegas, I think they have one loss. And they're, they're pulling these wins out their ass. If you ever want to know what can happen in the first month of the season, look no further than those Anaheim Ducks. 
Do I really want to be getting in the business of betting against a team that's on a five game winning streak, especially when Pittsburgh has really been silly this whole season? You know what? I'm not going to do that. But anything that I said so far to this point, feel free to add Sidney Crosby to register a point. He's a go-to guy for me. I don't know why. If they leave his at, at half a point, I'm always inclined to take the over. I, I'll, I'll always take the over on Sidney Crosby as long as they leave it at a half. And then I want to look at this. This is a very interesting game. The Flyers are playing the Sharks. The Sharks... <laughs> They've conceded double-digit goals in back-to-back -back games. Now, with the Flyers coming into town, look, I'm not looking for double digits, but I am just looking for that over. I mean, if you can't keep pucks out of your net, and I would imagine there's only so many games they're going to score one goal. I think that did they just score one in back-to-back -back games? They're going to be able at, on their home ice to eventually score more than one goal. Unless we're talking about the worst team in the history of hockey. Because normally this isn't like the NBA where some team has eight wins or something like that. I think this game should go over. It might happen in a weird way. Maybe it will be 7 nothing Philadelphia or it will be 5-3, five, 5-2. Five, I don't know. But... The way the Sharks are defending and whatever is happening over there, teams are having their way. Let's see if we can hop on that little run that they're on right there. And I guess when I say run, I really mean it in the worst way possible for them. So let's take the over in that Philadelphia San Jose game. And look, if they're going to go crazy, throw a couple player point props in there. Throw an over on hurdle point with the over six and a half. And then you could take, you know, my guy, he's, a, he's, a, he's scoring a lot this year, Konechny. You put those three together, I'll give, you a, I'll give you a little something nice going into Wednesday. And that's what I got for you here on this Tuesday. Good luck to you guys. Better luck to me, obviously. Make sure you're subscribed to the Odd Shopper channel here. Come follow me on social media. I, I may need you to follow me on social media because this Friday... I may not be able to do a video. I got to go to a wedding, so I'll be able to maybe put my picks out on, uh, you know, my Instagram. I have that Sniff Central chat. Maybe I'll put them on Twitter or something like that. So in the event, I'll try. In the event I don't get out a video on Friday, uh, you know, follow me on social, me social media. I'll be able to get it to you there. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow for Wednesday night. See ya.